Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk about XRP, but I got to start with this. Binance to enable Bitcoin Lightning Network withdrawals. Binance, the largest cryptocurrency exchange, has suspended Bitcoin withdrawals twice in the past 12 hours, despite causing alarm in the community. The exchange has reassured users that their funds are secure. Now at press time, the organization announced plans to introduce withdrawals via the Bitcoin Lightning Network. Now, I think that's a great solution, but I don't like the Lightning Network because it's tied to the World Economic Forum. And when you hear people like Christine Lagarde talk about Bitcoin not being relevant in the future, you need to pay attention, because I still feel somehow the World Economic Forum can control Bitcoin in the future through the Lightning Network. That has always been my theory. So let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Coinbase eyes UAE as potential international crypto hub. It is not uncommon for cryptocurrency companies based in the U.S. to relocate to other regions due to the uncertain regulatory landscape in the country. Gary, pushing innovation out of the country all the time. Several governments across the world have been introducing clear regulations for the crypto industry, but the U.S. government is not there yet. We don't even have clear framework around crypto yet. Meanwhile, the UAE has been praised for its efforts to regulate the crypto market. This has lured several organizations into the region and crypto exchange Coinbase could be next in line. Now this is coming at the same time that Ripple plans to expand to Dubai. One of the global leaders in the cryptocurrency solutions has announced its expansion. Specifically, Ripple is set to expand to Dubai according to CEO Brad Garlinghouse. Moreover, Garlinghouse announced the development at the Dubai Fintech Summit that is taking place today. I still think this is ironic that it's happening at the same exact time. I still think Ripple and Coinbase are working together behind the scenes. And this is coming at a time where Coinbase plans to grow and expand into something much bigger, like a cryptocurrency bank of the future. As in the case of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank failure in March, failure of the First Republic Bank is being blamed on interest rate hikes. It was interest rate hikes that took down all three of these banks. It was not crypto. But yet these politicians looked at crypto as an easy scapegoat when Silicon Valley and S Signature Bank fell. But they had no excuses really around First Republic. And we're going to see this continue to happen even in the future. More banks are going to collapse out. It's a dying system. Technology is moving much faster today and it's leaving the banks behind. People find better options. They find better places to store their money like investing it in crypto or gold or silver where they're actually going to get returns on their money. Then there's Metaverse and banking. And you look, you see Visa, MasterCard, American Express, HSBC, Bank of America. They're getting involved in Metaverse because they know this is the future. You have to move with technology or you will get left behind. Same goes for the U.S. government. If they don't get on board with crypto and innovation, they will be left behind in the future. Treasury Secretary Yellen refuses to answer if Biden will invoke 14th Amendment amid debt ceiling standoff. Now, the 14th Amendment states that validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law, including debts incurred for payments of pensions and bounties for services in susp suppressing insurrection or rebellion, shall not be questioned. While invoking the 14th would it undoubtedly invoke legal challenges the theory is that it would be unconstitutional for the government to stop paying its debts, and thus Biden could simply ignore the debt limit and continue to borrow if lawmakers don't reach an agreement. Like I said in previous videos, there is no real debt ceiling because they could always push it higher. But yet they flood the mainstream media news with chaos. Like, oh, if we don't raise this debt ceiling, that's it, the country's finished. I feel that's a distraction from something much bigger. But again, you see right there how simple it is to raise the debt ceiling. All they have to do is turn to the 14th Amendment. 
Cyber Capital founder fires shots at XRP. Ripple CTO responds. Again, another big argument going on around centralized and decentralized. Schwartz disagreed with Bonds, arguing that Bonds' definition of a decentralized network is flawed. Schwartz asked Bonds, you're arguing that a network is centralized if it cannot somehow force people who want it to be centralized to accept a decentralized network. By such definition, Ripple CTO says no network could ever be decentralized because a decentralized network has no means to coerce people to accept anything they don't wish to accept, including its decentralization. You know why this keeps coming up around XRP? It's because it's going to be used inside of the new financial system. It's going to work as a trust layer in between two central banks. And Bitcoin Maxis like to use that as an idea that people should stay away from XRP. It's centralized. It's the government coin. You shouldn't want to have it at all. You know, come over here to the dark side with Bitcoin. It's fully decentralized. That's all it is. It's arguing back and forth. I proved on this channel time and time again that XRP is decentralized as well. Then there's this. I'm going to play this quick clip for you. You were appointed to Ripple's board of directors. As we near the end of 2021, Rosie, I have to ask you, what trends should we keep an eye out in the new year? What are your predictions for, let's say, blockchain crypto space in 2022? I, you know, look, I mean, the future is already here, right? It's one of my favorite phrases that I use all the time. The train has already left the station. I think blockchain technology will always be here, not just because of crypto, but other applications as well. Whether it's NFTs, whether it's, it's a fractional ownership of real estate, whether it's art, all these other applications are there. So for me, you know, I, I think this world of innovation and technology has already arrived. It's really, you know, how we use it responsibly, how we really think about it to, to better our lives. You were point the reason I wanted to play that is because so many people misinterpret that. What she's talking about is the future is already here. The train has left the station. It doesn't mean you're too late to XRP. I always see people say that in on crypto Twitter. They're always like, I'm too late to the game. You are not too late. If you could buy XRP at these prices that it's at right now, you are still early. If you really know what XRP is and what its use case is and where it's going in the future, you will realize you're still early. Rumor claims Ripple and SEC met secretly twice. A new XRP lawsuit end date has been set. So this is this was recently hinted by Mr. Hoover, a prominent XRP influencer, stating that it's being rumored that the judgment will be delivered after Judge Torres' summer vacation in 2024. Are you kidding me? And Brad Garlinghouse, I pointed out in the video yesterday, he says he sees the case wrapping up in the single-digit months of this year, 2023, which means it's sometime between now and October. Now they're talking about 2024. Listen, this case needs to come to an end. It's absolutely ridiculous at this point, and this judge needs to step up and make a judgment already. Then there's this. So Ripple spent $200 million fighting the SEC. Take a listen. So what's your message to the SEC chair as you sit here in the UAE and in Dubai announcing an expansion of your business to this region, given the state of regulation in the United States right now? Who? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, so look, uh, I, we, we were talking about this a little bit earlier. I find it as a, a, US, a company that started in the United States and as someone who's a U.S. citizen, I, it's sad. Like, I have sadness about this. The U, U.S. is getting past not just a little bit, but by a lot. And, you know, but the, the tough thing about this is you have a, a country that I think has put politics ahead of policy. And, you know, that's not a good decision if you're trying to invest in the economy. You're seeing, you know, certainly here in the UAE with VARA, the Visual Asset, or sorry, excuse me, Virtual Asset Regulatory Authority. Certainly, what's happened recently in Europe with Mika, uh, the United States is definitely stuck. And you know, Ripple, the, the the case with the SEC, we will spend the first time I've shared this publicly. By the time it's said and done, we will have spent two hundred million dollars defending ourselves against a lawsuit, which 
from its very beginning, people were like, this doesn't make a lot of sense. You have video footage of the chair of the SEC as a professor at MIT saying 75% of these digital assets are commodities, and now he says they're all securities because he's the head of the SEC and he's seeking power, and he's putting power ahead of sound policy to grow an economy in the United States. Blockchain technologies are being invested in and pursued in the entrepreneurship outside the United States. And one of the first pieces of advice I give entrepreneurs when they come and ask me, hey, I'm getting something started, I'll say, if I were you, I would not start in the United States. And I think there's a lot of U.S. based. That is absolutely correct on so many levels. And the sad thing is, it's sad for the United States. Because Brad summed it up right there. We all seen Gary back in 2018. I remember the XRP community all up in arms. Gary's going to be the head of the SEC. Let's go. It was like that bullish moment. Then he got there and everything changed because he's on a power trip right now. That's what's really going on. And you know, the sad part of it is Ripple is going to spend $200 million defending themselves along the way. But I like the way Brad summed it up. That's why I wanted you all to see that video. Zoom adds 100 plus payment methods for XRP purchases. So Zoom has secured yet another collaboration to make XRP purchases more accessible to its users. XRP Ledger Labs, the development team behind Zoom, recently partnered with Poco, a reputable payment platform to bring an on-ramp aggregator to Zoom. The aggregator will give users over 100 plus payment methods for their XRP purchases. That is absolutely great because that's what we want. We want to be able to utilize XRP for payments and that adds value to XRP along the way. But you know, I hope this case wraps up long before 2024. It has to come to an end this year. And I think a lot of the, what's going on around that right now is speculation. And it's a lot of people creating some sort of hype that it's going to be delayed forever at some point. You know, that's what they're trying to push out there. I don't know if any of that's true. I just want this judge to step up and do her job already. Get this case done and over with and let all of us get our financial freedom because that's what's really being held back me and you the retail investor because if this case wasn't going on xrp would absolutely be sitting at a much much higher price but with that said i'm going to wrap up this video i want to thank you all for watching i appreciate all of you watching my videos we'll see you in the next one have a great night